Hey, good evening. Uh, Dan here, stockmarketmentor.com. Let's look at Tesla today. Now, um, I have no position in this stock, so I have no ax to grind, uh, no position to burnish. I'm just talking about this stock. I took my profits, not right at the top here, but I, I took them on Monday. Uh, I posted that on, um, you know, the world's, uh, you know, most famous uh, ash heap and uh, dumping ground Twitter. Um, uh, that I just got out of the out of the stock. I'm kind of looking still for 2,000, but I'm not putting my money where my mouth is. There, I said it. I'm not. Um, it, it looks to me like that's where the stock's going to ultimately go. To me, I think this is pretty bullish for the stock that you know it gapped up, ran up on Monday, and then closed near the low of the day. But and and I remember looking at this. Uh, I wasn't really at my desk when I saw this, and I thought, huh. I wonder if this is a climax top. Like this could be it. This could be it for the stock. The stock, and I know all you uh, uh, Muskians and uh, Teslonians, you know, you just got the vapors hearing me say that because everybody knows this stock is going ultimately to Mars. Um, it's not. But uh, nobody thinks that this stock is ultimately going to top. It just keeps going up and up and up and up. But as I was looking at the price range here, I thought, huh. This stock really looks like, it seems like maybe it's hit a top. However, I have seen many Climax tops in my day. I've made money on some of them, and I've been absolutely embarrassed and broke on others. Happily, the latter case was early in my trading career, and the former case has been not so early in my trading career. It takes a while to see these. If this was really a climax top, what you would be seeing, what you would have seen on this type of thing is not, not a move like this and then a close near the bottom. You would have seen this kind of thing. You would have seen a really long tail and then a close at the bottom of the range. That is a climax top. And then what you would see after that is you would see the stock trade lower and lower and lower still, maybe even to the 50, and then you'd see it kind of wander around here a little bit, and then I don't know what. But that is what a climax top would look like. This is not that. It's not one of those. This right now, as I see it, is a money-sucking wench. And what I'm saying is it's not going down. It hasn't worked off enough supply to go back up. And so it's just sitting here. And also, we've got uh, July options expiration coming up the day after tomorrow. I can't believe it's already Wednesday. We've got options expiration coming up the day after tomorrow. And so I'm looking for the stock to probably get pinned somewhere around here. I'm just not looking for a big massive move one way or another. So what I would suggest doing is if you're already long Tesla, you know where your stop is. If you don't have one, you know, good luck to you and that's great. Um, but if, you know, you know where your stop is. If it was me, I'd probably keep a stop under uh, yesterday's intraday low. But I would not be buying the stock right now. Again, I'm just telling you, it'd be nice for me to be pounding the table on some stock and, and have uh, people that watch this go, oh, I love Dan. He's so great. He gave me a great price target. I know I'm going to make money on this. It's not what this video is about. This video is to like inject a little sanity and a little risk management into your trading. If you can just watch this thing trade sideways for a bit, you will ultimately get a better entry, a more, uh, a lower risk entry uh, relative to your reward. And the reason I'm saying it that way is because I just don't see over the next day or two the stock running up to a new high. Not unless Elon, you know, tweets something, which could always be the case. Hey, he just tattooed an infant and named it something that I don't even know how you pronounce the name. So this dude will do anything. You just never know. But as I see it, the best trade here is no trade. The best trade is to watch this trade. And uh, somebody, it wasn't me, uh, but somebody was talking in the forum today 
um, I, they kind of almost took offense because they thought somebody said, what do you mean you can't make money shorting Tesla or buying puts? Um, and, you know, I don't really think anybody, at least on our website, has said that, that you can't make money shorting Tesla. You actually, you obviously can make money shorting Tesla. And I'm not a Teslonian. Their quality control sucks. And that kind of takes me right out of the game. If I want to drive something, I want to know that it's going to go where I want it to go in the time that I need to be there. So I'm not that guy. But I totally respect a stock that does this. How can you not? And so what I'm saying is you watch the stock, wait for your ship to come in. If you're trying to short the stock, it's just a really, really risky endeavor. It's a very, like, what if you'd shorted the stock here on Monday? You say, like, well, of course, if you shorted it right at the top, you're probably a liar um, because you didn't. But, you know, somebody did. So that's great. Then the stock comes down and, you know, you're up 15%. Well, on the other hand, you could have shorted right at the close because you think this is the way the stock's going to trade. And now you're flat and you're wondering what the heck's going on. So I'm just saying the pressure still is on the buy side. S traders are still coming for this stock. And I'll tell you one thing. If I was short this stock, I would be really nervous, really nervous. The company reports earnings next week. And you never, you literally never know what their earnings are going to be. They, they could report that they've sold 50 million cars like yesterday. They could. You never know. And then later it's like, ah, we were just kidding. But the stock's up at 8000 bucks. You just never know with this stock. So it's really, really risky to hold a stock like this over earnings. I'm not saying don't do it. Some of you will. And if the stock pops, you're going to be making a million bucks and you're going to say, well, Fitzpatrick doesn't know what he's talking about. I actually do know what I'm talking about because I'm not talking about the direction of the stock. I'm talking about the risk that you take in owning the stock over earnings because the stock could just as easily trade down to where you're freaking out. You sell your position for a big loss. And then, of course, as soon as you do that, the stock rebounds without you. So it's just really risky. And then you could say, okay, well, I'm just going to hold it come hell or high water. I don't care what the stock does. Well, actually, secretly, yes, you do. But if you decide that that's what you're going to do, then hopefully this happens as opposed to this. So this is a real risky stock to be holding over earnings. If it's me, and it is, I'm just waiting for the stock to consolidate and give me a little bit better entry before I even consider making the trade. And you can see over this chart that the stock will ultimately do that. It's just that right now it's not going to do it on your time uh, frame. Okay. All right. Um, that's it. And uh, I'll see you guys here tomorrow.